distinctly bushy appearance. And tracing any individual creature's line of ancestors is a complex business. If Lucy's species had evolved like any other animal, her evolutionary tree should have the same bushy shape. There should be lots of two-legged creatures appearing just after the planet of the apes. But the fossil records seem to show that the only signs of adaptive radiation came well after Lucy. All the fossils leading back from Lucy to the planet of the apes seem to be just primitive versions of the same Australopithecine Lucy. It seemed that Lucy had evolved without any adaptive radiation. Our family tree appeared to have no related branches before Lucy at all, but was just a solitary straight line. And this defied the laws of evolution. One would expect uh, to look at human evolution as uh, an adaptive radiation, but the way it was always reconstructed was very much as a linear story. And I think that actually goes back to the idea of human uniqueness. People expected humans to evolve differently and uniquely and have a single line. It seemed to many that the old idea that humans were different from all other animals was right. Every other creature had followed the typical evolutionary pattern of adaptive radiation, except Lucy's species. She alone seemed to have emerged from a single elite line of super creatures, so special they defied the laws of evolution. Then, thousands of miles from Africa, a chain of events began that would alter our whole attitude to Lucy and her species' extraordinary ability to defy the laws of evolution. Along came Jay Quaid. He couldn't care less about human evolution. He's a geochemist an expert in the chemical composition of rocks. A few years ago, he was contacted by some baffled paleontologists. They had noticed something strange about fossils dating from between six and eight million years ago. Fossils from the end of the planet of the apes. A whole swathe of animals, not just the apes, seemed to disappear and they all had one thing in common. They lived in the same environment. Starting about eight million years ago, what was disappearing were animals that they believed were specific to a forested habitat. Tree-dwelling orangutans, tree-dwelling monkeys, forest-dwelling giraffes, forest-dwelling rodents, to name a few. In place of the tree dwellers were new fossils. Fossils of completely different types of animals. Animals that lived on open plains. For some unknown reason, there had been a radiation of new forms. But what had caused it? There was a big mystery. And so it was our mission, it was our task, to try to flesh out all the cause and effect here. Try to identify the causes behind this big change, this big turnover in the, in the animals. Quaid went all over the world sampling rocks from the end of the planet of the apes. And everywhere he found mysterious nodules. Nodules of a substance called calcite, a carbon compound left by decaying plants. Different types of plant leave behind their own unique calcite fingerprint. Identify that fingerprint and you will know what vegetation had covered the world at the time that all these changes were happening. All that we require for a single analysis is um, it's about on, on that order. And that, to me, is an amazing thing. Because you give me a sample this size, and I'll reconstruct the landscape for you. The ground-up nodules were mixed with acid to release carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide was trapped in test tubes. Carbon dioxide contains radioactive isotopes, which are different in every type of plant. 
So, identify the isotope and you identify the type of plant. Quaid's nodules showed a clear pattern. They said that eight million years ago, much of the world was covered in forest. But by six million years ago, the forests had shrunk. In their place was grassland. Quaid had stumbled upon something extraordinary. He realized that he was looking at one of the great changes in life on Earth. For some unknown reason, at the end of the Planet of the Apes, there had been an environmental revolution across the planet, the perfect conditions for dramatic evolutionary change. There were clear and strong hints from paleontological records for a major extinction event, a kind of um, ecologic bl blitzkrieg in terms of the animals, that is, that really a lot of, t a lot of uh, important animals that had roamed the landscape disappeared, completely disappeared in the period eight to six million years ago. There had been a mass extinction. This explained the disappearance of the planet of the apes. As the forests were replaced by grassland, all sorts of forest-dwelling animals had died on a massive scale. In their place had come new species, ones that could adapt to the new world, the plain dwellers. A vast adaptive radiation had begun. It had affected every kind of animal on the planet, except, apparently, us. Because if the theory built on Lucy was still to be believed, then her species alone had evolved without being part of this radiation. They alone came from a single elite line of creatures so special, they defied the laws of evolution. It was all starting to look a little bit absurd. No one thought the idea of our unique evolutionary path more absurd than Meeve Leakey. Ever since the 1470 disaster, she had had her suspicions about Lucy and the amazing story she seemed to tell. The news of the mass extinction and adaptive radiation prompted her to re-examine the whole issue. It's always intrigued me that we'd only knew about one species that was over three million years old because if you look at any other animal group, then you'll get radiation. And it just didn't make sense. So last year, Meeve Leakey returned to the three million year old rocks of northern Kenya. She was looking for a fossil. It was a fossil that in theory should not exist because most people thought that three and a half million years ago there was only one possible human ancestor, only one human-like species that walked on two legs, the Australopithecine Lucy. Find a different species of human-like biped and she would have proof of adaptive radiation in humans, proof that we had evolved just like other animals. Then one of her team spotted something. As I saw it, I stopped and bent down and looked at it. Uh, I could say, what is this? So I just said, it's, this might be something good. But Mif was behind me about 200 meters. And we looked and it was just a few little fragments, they didn't look particularly smart. But you never know, and you always hope there's going to be something more under the ground. And we were lucky. I became so happy. I didn't, I went to the camp, I even I didn't do that. I didn't eat anything, I didn't eat anything. It was just the only joy it was in my heart. It was a skull, so it was, you know, really exciting. But at that point, there wasn't enough of it to say whether it was um, the same species as Lucy or not. 25 years after they did it for the first time, Meeve Leakey's team assembled a skull that they believed to be about three million years old. This time, 
there had to be no mistakes. So we spent the next year um, repairing all the cracks and taking all the rock off it and um, making it in, into the situation where we could start study, studying it. Because you can't study it, obviously, until, it, until it's been reconstructed and um, is as close as possible to its original shape. To help her, she called in Dr. Fred Spohr, an expert in anatomy from University College London. He uses a technique called computed tomography to analyze the inner structure of fossil bones. This helps him work out how a fossil fits together. The first thing they noticed was the skull had a small brain, just like Lucy. So it clearly would not resurrect the discredited big brain theory. Then came a key discovery. It was to do with how the spine entered the head. In apes, the spine always enters the head at the back of the skull. It's a typical characteristic of four-legged animals. But in the millions of years since the end of the planet of the apes, our spines have shifted to enter our head underneath the skull. This helps us to walk upright. It's one of the reasons we walk on two legs and apes don't. In the new skull, the hole for the spine was underneath, just like humans. It meant the creature must have walked on two legs. So it was a possible human ancestor. The question now was, was it just the same species as Lucy? The creature, the theory said, had evolved in one single line from apes. Or was it something different? The important question that, of course, from day one, when the, when the specimen was found, and is always in the back of your mind, even when you're cleaning, is, what is it? Um, ultimately, that's what we're kind of after. Um, so, in this case, Yes, so we had to start comparing it with what we knew about other human ancestors from approximately the same period, and the, and the most obvious thing was to compare it with Lucy's kind. It was then that Dr. Spohr made a breakthrough. It was something about the face. Apes have upper jaws that jut out, a chin that falls away, and a nose that sticks out ahead of their cheekbones. Lucy's face was like an ape's. In humans, the upper jaw, the nose, the chin, and the cheekbones are all on the same level. It means our face is flat. The new skull was also flat, like a human's. If you go from one cheekbone to the other cheekbone, you can put a pen across, and it's nearly, um, nearly flat, all the way here in what you call the mid-face as well. Um, if you that now try to do here in, in, in Lucy, that's impossible because you have that nose coming forward, so you, you, you balance over it. The difference between the new skull and Lucy was fundamental. They had to be different species. And there was more. When they dated it, they discovered the new skull was 3.5 million years old, almost exactly the same age as Lucy. It meant they had found a possible human ancestor that was of an entirely different species to Lucy, but living at exactly the same time. Lucy was not unique. Here was clear evidence of adaptive radiation in humans. And so in February this year, they announced that they had discovered flat face man, or as they called him, Kenyanthropus platyops. All those theories about how unique humans are, that only Lucy could have made the footprints at Lytoli, that there had only been Lucy's species, that we had followed a path of evolution different from all other animals, they have all come tumbling down. We are just like any other creature. There is nothing different or special about human evolution. We are governed by the same laws of nature as everything else. It really questions again that, that uniqueness. Um, 